Hello everyone and welcome to today's video on liver transplants, where specifically we will be looking at the piggyback technique. In this video, we will be looking at the basic anatomy of the liver, an overview of why you may need a transplant, an overview of the piggyback procedure which can be further broken up into the donor hepatoectomy, the recipient hepatoectomy, and the recipient implantation. To start off, we are going to cover the basic anatomy of the liver and the surrounding structures. The liver is located in the upper right quadrant of your abdomen and is protected by your rib cage. It is located below the diaphragm and is suspended by the coronary ligament and the right and left triangular ligaments. These ligaments are extensions of the falciform ligament, which connects the liver to the interior abdominal wall. Located behind the liver and a little bit deeper into your body is the inferior vena cava and the abdominal aorta, which carries blood to and from the surrounding areas. These structures pass through the diaphragm and extend into the chest, connecting to your heart. From an inferior view of the liver, we can see that the liver has four quadrants, the left and right lobes and the caudate and quadrate lobes. From here, we can see two structures entering the liver and two structures leaving the liver. Specifically at the porta hepatis, we can see the portal vein entering the liver, which carries deoxygenated, nutrient-rich blood into the liver from the surrounding organs. And we can also see the hepatic artery, which carries oxygenated blood into the liver. We can also see here the common bile duct leaving the liver, which carries bile to the digestive tract or through the cystic duct to be stored in the gallbladder. Lastly, we can see the hepatic veins, which are carrying deoxygenated blood out of the liver and into the inferior vena cava. Now, this organ has incredible regenerative ability when it becomes damaged and can regrow to its original state if part of it is cut out. This is the case for patients with some types of cancers as tumors can be cut out and the liver will regenerate to its original size. This regenerative capability also applies to some transplant techniques as part of the donor liver can be cut out of one individual and placed into a recipient where it can also regrow to its original size. However, at times the liver can become so damaged that it is not able to regenerate and the only option is to do a transplant. This is common for deceased livers that have advanced stages of fibrosis as they have been damaged over a long period of time and certain cancers such as hepatocellular carcinoma. Once you've reached this stage where transplantation is the only option, you will go through a multidisciplinary evaluation by a committee to determine a MELD or model of end stage liver disease score, which will help you determine the severity of the disease. Those with a higher score will be given a higher priority on the waiting list. If you are the highest priority on the list, your healthcare team will be notified of the next available organ donor that is available and be sent to retrieve the liver. This is someone who has chosen to donate their organs to another after they have passed away in hopes of prolonging the recipient's life. Once you have an available organ, there are a multitude of different procedures that can be done for liver transplants, depending on if you're taking part of someone else's liver who is still living, or if you're taking the whole liver of another individual. In today's video, we will be focusing specifically on the piggyback technique in which you take the whole liver and implant it into the recipient along with part of the inferior vena cava. It is also important to note that there are other techniques such as a bicaval approach and other variations of the piggyback method. However, the one we will be talking about today is one of the most popular. If we now move into a step-by-step -step procedure of how to perform a liver transplant via the piggyback technique, it can be broken up into three main steps. The first one being the donor hepatoectomy, where you remove the liver along with the inferior vena cava from an organ donor. The second step is the recipient hepatectomy, where you remove the damaged liver from the recipient. And the third step is recipient implantation, where you implant the donor liver into the recipient. If we start off with the donor hepatectomy, a complete midline incision will be made from the suprasternal notch to just above the umbilicus in conjunction with a bilateral subcostal cut, allowing for complete exposure. 
This will require you to cut through multiple layers of your abdomen, including your skin, fascia, abdominal muscles, underlying fat, and peritoneum. Upon doing this, you should now have good exposure of the liver and retractors can be put into place to hold this view. The next step is to divide the left triangular ligament and dissect in a clockwise motion, allowing you to mobilize the left side of the liver from the diaphragm. This will now allow you to have good exposure of the gastrohepatic ligament, which will be divided superiorly to inferiorly, allowing the liver to be freed from the lesser curvature of the stomach. After this, you will then move towards the hilar structures of the liver and divide the common bile duct. It is important to note that at this point, you should be looking for abnormal vasculature that you may have to reconstruct in the arterial blood supply. You will then divide the inferior vena cava in the chest above the diaphragm and go back to the hilar structures to divide the arterial blood supply from the aorta. This will then be followed by a division of the portal vein and division of the infrahepatic cava. The liver is then removed with a piece of the diaphragm containing the suprahepatic vena cava. On a back bench, you will then further prepare the donor graft. The first thing you will need to do is strip the diaphragm from the liver. In some cases, the caudate lobe may also need to be removed in order to fully expose the retrohepatic cava. Further, the suprahepatic cava is sewn closed. Your graft is now ready for implantation. The next phase of the procedure will be the recipient hepatectomy. To start off, a midline incision with horizontal extensions will be made. This will require you to cut through the same layers of the abdomen as described earlier. Upon completing this incision, retractors can be placed and you should now have a good view of the damaged liver. In this case, we can see that our patient has a fibrotic liver. The next step will be to remove the non-vascular structures holding the liver in place. This will require you to take down the falciform ligament which attaches the liver to the anterior abdominal wall. Further, similarly to the donor hepatectomy, you will move towards the left triangular ligament. In addition to dissecting this ligament, you will also dissect the coronary ligament in a clockwise motion, allowing you to mobilize the left side of the liver from the diaphragm again allowing for good exposure of the gastrohepatic ligament, which will be divided superiorly to inferiorly, allowing for the liver to be freed from the lesser curvature of the stomach. Lastly, the right triangular ligament will be divided to detach the liver from the diaphragm. Now that we have mobilized the edges of the liver, we will move on to dissecting the vessels holding it in place. This begins with the division of the hepatic vein with a vascular stapler. The cystic duct is then divided between ligatures followed by the common bile duct. Following in a similar fashion, the common hepatic artery is divided. Lastly, the portal vein is divided between ligatures. At this point, some piggyback procedures call for the patient to be put on venovenous bypass, where cannuli are inserted into the femoral vein, portal vein, and jugular to create a circuit. This circuit allows for deoxygenated blood from the lower half of the body to be redistributed to the heart through the superior vena cava, although not all procedures call for this. Now that we have removed the damaged liver, we can move on to the last phase of the procedure, the recipient implantation. This consists of implanting the donor graft that you had produced earlier. To start off, a longitudinal opening is made on the anterior wall of the recipient's inferior vena cava. An incision is also made on the posterior wall of the donor inferior vena cava. The donor graft is then placed into position and the vendotomies or holes are orientated towards each other. Corner sutures are further placed and a running suture joins the two holes together. The inferior vena cava is then over sewn. The next step involves the reconstruction of the portal vein and an end-to-end -end anastomosis is formed between the recipient and donor portal vein using a corner stitch and a running suture. Further, clamps are removed from the retrohepatic cava and the portal vein and the liver is revascularized. 
The arterial blood supply to the liver is then reconstructed as a parachute technique is performed for the anastomosis of the donor hepatic artery to the recipient hepatic artery and the clamps are removed. Lastly, a cholecystectomy or removal of the gallbladder is performed as the cystic duct is tied and divided. Bile flow is restored as the donor common bile duct is anastomosed to the recipient bile duct using a parachute technique and clamps are removed. You have now completed the transplant and the surgical field is closed as you suture together the different layers of the abdominal wall that you initially cut. That brings us to a conclusion of today's video. We hope that you now have a better understanding of how to perform a piggyback procedure when it comes to liver transplants and we thank you for watching.